that we could make 10 different series about him, not just one, um, because there was so much amazing material. I guess, you know, going from there, the idea of the curse, I don't think I'd heard about this, this curse idea before. So how much of that is based on just the fact that he had so many woes and how much was it rooted in something you found? Well, the, the story, sorry, you go, Frank, like your turn. I was going to say that the, what you were to say, Steve, which is the, the story about his first memory being this bird, this kite that landed on his crib is very famous and it's true. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been misinterpreted many times, including by Freud, who, uh, who had a bad translation and completely got wrong what the story meant. Um, who, and he later acknowledged that much to his embarrassment. But so this was our uh, interpretation of that actual event and, and what it meant to Leonardo. The, the fact that he did go through so many woes and things looked like they were about to go perfectly and then fell apart. It, it is uh, unbelievable to think that, you know, what we see now through history is such a different view. And to then get this story, did you have any points I'd like to hear from you both, like going through this story, that there were things that you really just had to focus on and other things that you probably miserably had to set aside. Oh, there are plenty that we had to set aside and, and you know, we were very sad about. I mean, I, I think, uh, I'm sure you know, the, the eight episodes, each of them is centred very much, each one is centred very much around a specific piece of art. Mm -hmm. And um, that was an interesting discussion, actually choosing which uh, which of the artworks those eight were going to be, because some of them were slightly surprising. Um, you know, some of them were, were pieces of art that were never actually finished, like the Grand Cavallo, the great horse statue. But the ones we chose and the ones we were really keen to focus on are the ones where there was a great story at the heart of it. There was a real struggle to produce this piece of art, even if in the final analysis, as with the Grand Cavallo, it was never finished. The struggle to create it was so dramatic and so interesting that we just had to tell that story. So I think those eight very slowly started to rise to the surface and we knew those were the ones we wanted to grab. And that, that was one of the things I really loved about Leonardo was how much he struggled and how much he failed. I mean, he's Leonardo da Vinci. And like you say, like today, you just think, well, he's one of the greatest geniuses who ever lived. But at his, you know, at the time he was a young man and, and even you know, toward the end of his life, he never stopped struggling. And and never felt things were good enough, you know, and famously wouldn't finish things. And I, I just found that so moving, you know, his his dedication and devotion to, to beauty and truth. It's remarkable how many pieces of art were never completed. I mean, it's remarkable how few, actually, if you see the catalogue of them, there are, because he was incredibly prolific as a sketcher. But final pieces of finished pieces of art seem quite few and far between sometimes. It would be miraculous to also be able to imagine what what was lost. I mean, I'm sure there's there's so much that you allude to in the show that must have just vanished for various reasons. And unfortunately, yeah, yes, and, and that's the other thing. There's there's an awful lot we don't know. Mm -hmm. And you, when you sit down to like write a story, a narrative, a coherent account of his life, you realize there there's just massive gaps here. And whether you like it or not, you're going to have to, you know, make some decisions here and invent some things. So we tried to connect the dots, you know, as best we could. And then we did, we invented some fictions that actually kind of shed true light on Leonardo's character in a way you couldn't have unless you'd invented those, those fictions. So it was quite an interesting journey we went on to try and arrive at what we saw as the truth of his character. How do you two work together? What What is your process like for a show like this and, and what happens throughout it? Well, we sat in a room for two months to begin with, you know, your typical writer's room. It was quite a small writer's room. We had one very good guest writer, Gabby Asher, and the two of us and, and some great script editors. Um, but we sat in a room discussing for a long time. And then, you know, each of us took a lead on one episode and then we passed it to the other one to work on, like a game of consequences, really. Um, uh, so, I mean, the, the work was very much split down the middle. I, I, I would say, I'll be the first to say this one, because Frank always says it first, is amazingly over the last two years, we've never had a single argument. And it's, it's, still, it's still waiting to happen. I'm sure maybe one, <laughs> maybe not. Hey, but. Right now. 
<laughs> well, it's funny because Steve said, you know, we were excited to jump in. But the truth is, I was afraid of, of tackling the subject matter because I thought Leonardo da Vinci would be so challenging as a character. And because telling stories about artists is always difficult because the stakes, the dramatic stakes are, well, you succeed in making a piece of art or you don't, you know. And if you don't, well, that's too bad. It doesn't necessarily imply great drama. And it was only when Steve signed on that I said, okay, if Steve's going to do it, I hadn't met him at that point, but if he's going to do it, you know, I knew his, his work, uh, then, then I'll, uh, I'll partner with him. And it ended up just being a, a real pleasure, um, you know, exploring Leonardo's mind with him and, and coming up with something to say about him. And I think, you know, if you've seen the show, you know, for us, in addition to his just unbelievable devotion to his work, there was this sense of how much of his life he sacrificed to his work. You know, and here was somebody who really had no family as a child. And, and so the show really is about Leonardo coming to have a life, you know, coming to have a kind of unconventional family and, 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 and seeing the beauty of that and, and feeling the love of that. And then of course, spoiler alert, having to sacrifice it. Um, and, and we thought that was, again, it's, it's, there's a fiction in there, but it's also saying something very true about, about who Leonardo was. Well, and so much of the story relies on Katarina as, as a part of this kind of his, his life. So what was it like creating this character in the sense of there, I understand there, there was a real Katarina, but how, how did you kind of weave her into the story? Well, you're right, there was a real Katarina and there are very few references to her in history. There are two, basically. One is that very late in life, he wrote a list to his servants saying, I'm going to be traveling and these are the people I want traveling with me. And he mentioned the woman from Cremona. That's actually what he said in the list. I want the woman from Cremona with me. Um, and also uh, it's believed that she was the model for his uh, very late masterpiece, Later in the Swan. And there are, the, 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 the piece of art doesn't exist anymore. It's been destroyed, but there are some sketches one of which is in Buckingham Palace now. So there are images of her and historical references to her. Now, from a dramatist's point of view, that's just nectar, because it's like we've been left these little breadcrumbs that we have to follow the trail. And after, after some time, you have to start making up the story. You have to start filling in the blanks. And that, that's really you know, a joyous experience. We weren't, as I said, we weren't starting from zero. We knew that um, she was a real person. She was very important to him and they had this important platonic relationship and also that she'd been his model. But the rest, we were just, you know, reaching for scraps and trying to weave the fiction out of it. That's the other thing you realize, you know, when you start writing drama about history is there are these gaps and often these gaps concern women. Mm -hmm. Often women are simply, you know, footnotes or omitted entirely. And you know that wasn't the case. You know, like if we had a true account of his life, there would be lots of uh, of important women in his life, and we would know a lot about them. So, in a way, by imagining who La Cremona was, you're kind of, I think, rescuing her from the historians who failed to to tell her story. Um, and and it's sort of an interesting debate, like which is truer, to just go with what the you know what the the, the men at the time wrote or to imagine what might have been. Well, last last quick question I'm gonna ask is, what was your favorite episode? Was there one that, yeah. that you know, <laughs> was your darling perhaps? I, I, I can't say that I've got a favorite episode because it changes all the time. I certainly have favorite moments, hmm. lots of lots of them. There's a moment, I mentioned this recently, there's a moment that makes me gasp in episode seven where he looks at a wall in the Hall of the 500 this gigantic wall that he's about to paint, and there's nothing on it, and he holds up a torch, and suddenly he imagines what he's seeing there, and it's this frenetic battle scene, and it looms out of the picture at you, and it still makes me gasp. I love that moment. Yeah, I can't say I have a favorite episode either. You know, they're all like uh, your children, and you, you love them all. Some of them, you know, are shorter than the others or have, you know, too big feet or whatever, but, but even in their imperfections, there's things about them all that you... Some of them had an easier birth than others. That kind <laughs> yes, <of> that's <laughs> Well, thank you both so much. It was a pleasure. I love the series. Thank uh, you. Thanks again.